expected to speak with the precision of attorneys or politicians. We are not. I always think of James Baldwin. You know, James Baldwin was one of my favorite writers because he managed to tell white people what they feel like to be around. Ever been to Africa? No. You gotta go. Man, it's your motherland. What are you thinking? Missing out. What are you? Career defining, critically acclaimed, and genre bending. Just a few of the ways to describe Donald Glover's hit television series, Atlanta, a series that stands head and shoulders above any drama or comedy in this latest golden age of television. A surrealist work described by its creator as a Twin Peaks with rappers. The show is rife with symbolism and nuance, enough to give its inspiration a run for its money. We'll take a look at some of the imagery, story, and purpose of this ephemeral series, exploring the meaning behind Glover's magnum opus, and more broadly, to glean something of the enigma that is the black experience. To best understand the work, let's take a quick dive into Glover's resume. As a graduate from New York University, Glover began as a writer on Tina Fey's Dirty Rock. Studied uh, playwriting and television writing at New York University for, um, for four years. Um, and I also studied playwriting at, uh, at DeKalb School of the Arts in Atlanta before that. Um, I was really into writing plays and, and acting in them and stuff like that. And then, um, then I, I wrote on, I got the, the, the big break to write on 30 Rock. Uh, for three years, right, right when it started, um, that was like, I, I, to this day, like people are like, how'd you get it? And I'm like, ah, I don't know. He quickly arose from the writers' room to starting as a member of the cult classic sitcom Community, before launching a rap career in the midst of it under the moniker Childish Gambino. After a run of mixtapes, he released his debut album Camp to mixed reviews, ranging from critique on the generic pop sound to appreciating the witty writing and punchlines. From there, his focus continued on developing his music career and the conceptual album Because the Internet was released in 2013. This album was a turn for the artist, where the concept had finally matched the potential, using a meta-narrative that included a cinematic element, a script, and Gambino playing the lead role during the press release. His take on the concept being the effect of a fast-moving, parasitic, and shallow internet and its effect on the world at large. He develops his voice further through the foray into the neo-soul and funk genre, from his musically defining record, Awaken My Love, fully realizing the potential and artistry in a way that empowers and complements his work in Atlanta. If anything, this is to paint how interesting of a road it was to the lead up of this show we're analyzing. At the very least, I hope you can understand that Glover's winding path to the series was one of intense introspection. At first, a black artist who grew up and made his bones in a predominantly white industry, frequently the only black member in the writer's room, to empowering burgeoning black voices that filled that of the Atlanta set. Finding his voice in the black community as an observer and outsider allowed Glover to take a perspective extremely personal, yet universal in its commentary. Examples of Glover's take on his own role in the community can be shown throughout the series as a sort of self-commentary. Uh, were you told as a child you talk white? Sometimes. Must have made you feel separate. What does that have to do with anything? Nothing, nothing. I think it's interesting when people aren't allowed in the group. The universal group. To be part of the team. You know, people just want to be seen. Doesn't matter what for. Who's Steve McQueen? The actor, man, you know, picking you cool. You're driving the sand devils. I don't know. Man, yeah, most black people don't know who Steve McQueen is. Really? Yeah, but I thought, you know, that you'd be into that kind of stuff. Guess not. But you know who Steve McQueen is, though. Yeah, but I'm Nigerian. Similarly, Glover has always been an outsider in the sense that he wasn't always well received by the black community. 
frequently critiqued for his writing of black women, often caricaturing them in a negative light. Bitches in the world to be a good woman. You can afford to invest early. I ain't got time to be sitting out here with no community theater ass nigga for eight years and wishing on a goddamn star. Uh, there are plenty, 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 plenty of good black women, but you don't see Brad Pitt trying to date Shonda Rhimes. I like to date the black girls of every culture, you know? I mean, you know, like the Filipinas. They're like the, the black girls of Asians. <laughs> Armenians. These are like the, the black girls of white girls. And even critiqued by other rappers, Glover has a penchant for stirring the ire of his own community. However well he depicts his struggles and absurdity as a member. The surrealist nature of the work is necessary to evoke the tone and feeling of being black in America, regardless of country or upbringing. The tension between the characters, the relevant morality plays, and the discussions highlight what it means to be a part of such a world. This place um, has a vibe. Hell yeah. <laughs> if we told them what being black in America is, would they believe us? Oh, this is not for television. This is just for us in the room. I'll ask you again more succinctly. If we told them what it was, would they believe us? No, fuck no, they wouldn't. Nigga, there's a fucking white supremacist starter kit at Target. Yeah, let me get us, uh, some tea. Examples such as his take on poverty. Speak up, there's a lot going on here, honey. Can I get a kid's meal? I don't see no kids. Yeah, I, I don't have a kid with me. Okay, see, I'm poor, Darius, okay? And poor people don't have time for investments because poor people are too busy trying not to be poor, okay? I need to eat today, not in September. Toxic masculinity. <laughs> Come on, man, stop playing, dog. Get in the car. <coughs> a nigga, that's a man. What? No, man, it's my ex. Your ex-girlfriend a man. Why you think she in jail with the men? She'd be on the other side. Nigga, you gay. This nigga gay as hell. <laughs> Shut the hell up, man. Uh, bad boy gay as hell. I'm gonna stab you all last when you get upstairs to themselves, man. Nigga, sit down. I know what y'all think she is. But I ain't on the shit, man. I'm not, I'm trying. And last but not least, identity. I am going to ruin you. I'm gonna ruin you. No matter where you go, I'm gonna follow you. I'm gonna be on you. And I am going to take back everything, everything that you, you stole from me. I'm not Alonzo. Listen, I wanna give you some advice. Play your part. People don't want Justin to be the asshole. They want you to be the asshole. You're a rapper. That's your job. The struggles that we have as people using his own personal experience and those of the writers, it provides us a deeper look at how the human condition is filled with hypocrisies. And thus we remain heedless to what we need to grow beyond ourselves. We're comfortable with our hypocrisy because to identify it, means going through some very tough change. I, no. I understand what you're saying, but some people found your remarks offensive. Yeah, well, freedom of speech. No, you're right. I agree. You hate women. What? See, the character Earn in Atlanta takes many lessons or L's in the show. That's how he learns. Often the fandom wonders when he'll get his life together. Gambling away the money he saved for a night out on the town only to lose it all in a foot race against Michael Vick. It's Michael Vick. Or bring a gun to a flight in the middle of a bag check. He learns that the only way to escape the bucket is to drag others down with you. Niggas do not care about us, man. Niggas gonna do whatever they gotta do to survive because they ain't got no choice. He ain't got no choice either. The world that black Americans inhabit is entirely transactional. You gotta stay on his good side now. It's 
He's Mr. Moneybags. Remember Uncle Jarvis used to manage Damon when he was in that group. Now they don't even talk no more. Cause you find out family is business. No, that's From the slave ships of the transatlantic trade to the entertainment industry. I don't know. This spooky thing called slavery happened and my entire ethnic identity was erased. <laughs> the series is Earn understanding this transactional relationship as he devolves into an abuser instead of the abused. Nigga, I'm trying to help you. Man, man. nigga, I ain't seen a hurt from you since my mom's funeral. And the first thing I hear out your mouth is, let's get rich. Walk, man. Gonna need about 20K in cash. 20K when? Right now. Hurt people hurt people. But if everyone's hurt, that just means a world of pain. Black kids. You know, I already felt alone. What else did you feel? Hurt, Why? I guess. Why? Because we're supposed to be friends. We're supposed to be friends. She never even asked why. Why I did what I did. You trusted Sasha? Yeah. And you were hurt by someone you trusted? Yeah. Like the family member who abused you? Yeah. Which made you feel powerless again? So you did all this to hurt one lady. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. Hey, look, I'm gonna go to that Def Jam 3 machine because this yeah. nigga is tripping. Yeah. Ow. So I'm guessing Sasha wasn't black. No, of course not. Yeah. They saw she looks at it, hands it back to me, and tells me it's too damaged to travel. On a domestic flight? On a domestic flight. That's exactly what I said. I mean, the pages were worn at best. Damn. White woman? I mean, do you even need to ask? Paperboy, who understands his relationship far before Earn does, still sees the dangers in the thinking and fears for what his cousin has become. Man, how you been? Huh? How you been, man? Oh. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. Man, cause <laughs> you seem busy all the time, man. <laughs> yeah. But busy's good, you know? Yeah, yeah. He chooses to create a life outside of the noise that is the industry. However, even in the countryside, he finds that there are pigs that will threaten his life still. In tonight? And they're expecting to see Paperboy? I don't know what to tell you. I just get sick. But just fill out the insurance claim. You'll make actually more money than you would have tonight. For Earn, this way of thinking even bleeds into his personal life, affecting his relationship with Van, his daughter, and ultimately himself. In the third season, this is highlighted to show his growing disillusionment and confidence in a world he now understands. In the fourth season, he is coming to terms with the consequences of this line of thinking and relents that only in each other will they find peace. When I think about the fact that you are also the mother of my child, I could just fucking burst. I wasn't able to feel that before. I mean, what else are we doing this for? If not for that feeling. What else is there? The show in its conclusion is almost hammering home this commentary that the only people we can trust at the end of the day is ourselves. See, the problem with us is we don't trust each other. Don't trust a Chicago nigga. They're shady. Don't believe niggas from New Orleans. They're slimy. Gotta watch out for them New York niggas. They're bound to hit a lick. We've been told time and time again, the only person you can trust
is yourself. Right? This is the crest of the finale. When the restaurant owner speaks to the hypocrisy of wanting to escape an oppressive world, yet still being dismissed when showing a different way. We seek the comforts of a world that has laid bare its tyranny because we can't imagine another way besides it. As he remarks on the acclaimed Japanese sushi masters, when it's a black man from Alabama making the same dish, at the same skill level, it still doesn't stack up to the comfort of a Popeye's chicken sandwich, or mindless consumerism, or corporate appropriation. He says, if the sushi is good, people will come. But I guess my master was never a nigger from Florida. Listen, brother, man. Give me that brother shit! The show even uses the symbol of a poison fish that has been prepared by a highly skilled master against an actual poison that is high fructose corn syrup. So you just want to drink the white man's poison, huh? I don't. High fructose corn syrup. Read about it. It'll kill you. This nigga serving poison fish. Hey, listen, man. Do you know the traditional way to make sushi is with your bare hands? And that sushi should be served at room temperature? Every Japanese sushi restaurant worth its soy sauce does it that way. And no one seems to notice. But if a brother from Alabama does it the same way, suddenly the fish is dirty. A restaurant established by an Italian family that the black community has made famous. However, the owner is also painted as a hypocrite, threatening the group before Darius saves them. As an African immigrant, this show hits really close to home for me. Growing up in black neighborhoods, seeing what some of my peers became, and the sense of purpose and identity being something that's thrust upon them, rather than something earned through self-reflection or rites of passage. The experiences were always as an outsider looking in, and in many ways reflected how Earn was at the start of the show, trying to find a lane to fit in, and ultimately just trusting himself and his judgment to navigate a world that wants you to remain rudderless. See, the truth is that the world moves too fast for good people to risk moving slow, which means it eventually catches up, even to the best of us. Miss you, man. How's mom? The show is about breaking the cycle of oppression by putting your trust in the ones you care about, letting go of the hurt, and finding purpose despite how deep the ways of iniquity and greed crash against our consciousness. No, you're not in the tank. You're really here and we're really your friends. Glover is a challenging artist and has found a way to connect his once disconnected voice to issues that pervade our world today. Race has always been something we clash against, but recent histories have made it a bedrock to the tensions we feel, but have no word for. We can only describe it as an absurdity, but on a positive note, more and more we're seeing the works of artists combating this tension, airing out the room, so to speak, as we better understand the nuance and complexity of blackness in the context of postmodernity. It's work like these that will help us come to terms with the tension this powder keg of society we have to participate in. It's no wonder he likens his series in comparison to The Sopranos, and rightly so. It's a work that gives voice to the unspoken speechless, one that will be etched in the annals of great American art. There's a song that I sing Whenever I'm sad, feeling bad there's a place in my head that I go when I'm feeling low. Thank you for watching. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded, but the writer's block was really real this time. So appreciate your patience. Uh, I've got some great concepts to release and write. So please expect these to come at the very least on a monthly basis moving forward. I want to thank you all who stay tuned in. I hope you can give me a like, subscribe, and comment if you appreciated anything about this video. Feel free to explore my channel more for other essays or tune in to some of the great music videos that I've made on my channel. 
If you're so inclined, my Patreon is set up now to help the channel grow. And as always, thank you for watching. Uh, well, okay.